Oh, and this one again is for Thomas Mitchell, who was kind enough to ask me that question in a very mannerable way. You know, he didn't flame me or anything. He reminded me that I said that Steve Kerr didn't. He reminded me of my comments about Steve Kerr in the past. He didn't go into specifics, but I knew what he meant. What I loved, and this is to you, Mr. Mitchell, is that you were respectful. You know, you didn't flame me or call me names or anything like that. Awesome. And that's why I'm making this vlog. And I want to make this part two to add this. My mother, at 81, is the wisest person I know. And when I was railing about how Mark Jackson was fired, my mother said, he needed to be fired. He got in the playoffs and he was stupid. That's my mom, okay? Who loved the fact that Mark Jackson was coaching but didn't like the moves that he made and said so early on, before he was fired. So when Lakeup pulled the trigger, she was happy. It wasn't like, oh, he took the black guy out or anything like that. My mom was like, he needed to go. Forget it. Forget all that. That's what my mom told me. The first time I said that, or this commenter chimed in, I don't remember the person's name, and said, your mom's really smart. <laughs> or your mom's right. But what the commenter said was, your mom's right. You need to listen to your mom. <laughs> I get it, okay? I get it. I get it. You know, I have to explain that what, what I go through in society in general. And you have to remember, I'm, 50, I'm 53 now. And everyone knows that I'm Zenny 62. That's the year I was born. I don't shy away from that at all. I love who I am. I'm not trying to be someone I'm not. I am me. And I say all that to say this. The, the fact is that we as African Americans have always taken a subordinate role to someone who's white in, in micro ways. And it's, I remember, for example, this was 1972, and bear with me, I know I'll get back to basketball, but you'll understand what I'm saying. I just want you to understand what I'm getting at. There was an uncle, my uncle had a friend, and he would brag that he bought a car every year, a new car, and he said, just like the white people do. And I remember thinking, and I was 10 years old at the time, why is it so important to pay attention to what someone white does? You know, that really rankled me. We were, in, we were in Tennessee at the time, and this was during the summer. And I, obviously, by the fact that I'm telling you this in 2016, I never forgot it. But we have a tendency to put people who are white above us in, in terms of our thoughts of what someone does economically or intellectually. For example, if, you find, if there's a microwave of particularly with older whites, they always question what you do. Like the person that might serve as the, the judge and jury of what you do. And a lot of us don't do that, except that when we, when we in the times that we do as blacks, it's generally aimed at someone else who's black. If you turn that around, that thinking around, and blacks did that in general, society would change. Because we would have more confidence in saying, hey, look, what you're doing is wrong. You need to stop doing it. We need to hold you in check. That is changing. And it's changing in part because of the emergence of hip-hop and also the advent of Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, So it really is changing. It's changing and it's, it's developing us into a, a people that we should have been a long, long time ago. But, you know, there was this road bump called slavery and violations and all that stuff. You get the idea. All right. Now, it's because of that, through, it's through that lens that I tend to look at society today because I ask basic questions. For example, did you know that the personal computer was created by someone who's black? A lot of people didn't know that. And when someone talks about their black card, it's always the, the stereotypical person who doesn't have the, the intelligence, but they have the style and the moves and all that. But I put this question to a person at Cafe Van Cleef recently if they knew who created the personal computer and someone said Steve Jobs. No. It was IBM. And the fellow there was black. They, they looked like, wow, a person was white, okay? That's today. So my point is that it's through that lens that I evaluated the warrior situation. And my, but what I've had to come to grips with is that you know, you know, look, a lot of us aren't that way. I don't know Mark Jackson as a person. I don't know how he thinks or if he's afraid to to express himself in a way that is intellectual. Uh, 
and, and but he became coach. Okay, so and he was coach for several years, and he sent the Warriors to the playoffs more than one year. That says something. That says a lot. We have the president of the United States, who had to avoid sounding like the angry black guy or the demonstrative black guy, but as he became more comfortable with the presidency, he became more comfortable with expressing himself as the authority figure, okay? As the president. That's what you're supposed to do. And so he's evolved into one of the greatest presidents we've ever had in the history of this country. So this is a, an evolution of us that, that is writ large, writ large. And But within that, I think we're finally getting to the point where a lot of us are becoming self-actualized so we can enjoy the success of others, regardless of color, be secure with ourselves, and move forward. But we have to go through this journey to get there. You are going to say, well, what does this have to do with basketball? Here's my answer. Everything. Everything. All right.